Today we're going to be talking about how to find velocity and acceleration vectors and speed given a position function. And in this particular problem, we've been given the position function r of t is equal to 3 cosine of t times i plus 2 sine of t times j. Now, we notice right off the bat that this is a vector function, right? It's also been called the position function, and we know from our courses before in derivatives and integrals all about position, velocity, and acceleration. What we know is that velocity is the acceleration of the position function. So we're going to start with this position function. We're going to take its derivative, which is going to be r prime of t, right? The derivative of r of t is r prime of t. But we know that that's also going to be velocity. So we're going to call that velocity as well, v of t. Then we're just going to take the derivative of this vector function, and that'll be our velocity function. Of course, when we do that with a vector function like this with i, j, and k components, we only take the derivative of these coefficients. So the derivative of 3 cosine t is going to be negative 3 sine t, because remember that the derivative of cosine of t is negative sine of t. So that negative comes out in front, and the 3 stays, and we have negative 3 sine of t times i. Then we have the derivative of 2 sine of t, which is just going to be 2 cosine of t times j. And notice there's no k component here. Essentially, this vector function is plus 0k, and the k drops away like that. So we don't have to worry about it. We just say that our velocity function is what we found here. Now, to find acceleration, of course, we're going to take the second derivative of our position function. So that's going to be r double prime of t, which we can also call acceleration, a of t. And we'll just take the derivative here of our velocity function. So the derivative of negative 3 sine of t, well, let's break it down. The derivative of sine of t is cosine of t, so that negative 3 is going to stay out in front, and we're just going to have cosine of t times i. The derivative of cosine of t here is negative sine of t, so that negative sign comes out in front, and we have minus 2 sine of t times j. So there's our acceleration function. Notice that these are both in the form of vectors, so we can call them the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. Now we just need to find speed, and speed we're actually going to find by taking the magnitude of our velocity vector. So now that we have both of these, we can go ahead and find speed. It's just going to be the magnitude of velocity or the magnitude of our first derivative, which is going to be equal to, and we always follow the same formula whenever we take magnitude like this, we always take the square root of the sum of the squares of each of our coefficients here. So we have this first coefficient, negative 3 sine of t. We're going to square that. When we square it, we'll get positive 9 sine squared t. So we say 9 sine squared t. Then we're going to add to that the square of our next coefficient here. So we're going to add to that the square of 2 cosine of t, which is going to be 4 cosine squared t like this. And of course here we have plus 0k. If we had a k component, we would take the coefficient here in front, square it, and add that here as well. But of course, for our case, we just have plus 0, so we don't need to include it. So just ignore that. Okay, so now we want to simplify this as much as we can. In this particular case, we recognize that we have sine squared of t and cosine squared of t. And remember our trigonometric identity that tells us that sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1. So what we want to do is try to isolate this identity so we can just cancel it out, substituting 1 in its place. The way that we're going to do that is by separating this 9 sine squared t into 5 sine squared t plus 4 sine squared t. So we'll get 5 sine squared plus 4, and then we have plus 4 cosine squared t. Now what we can do is factor out of these last two terms here a 4. So we'll leave this one, this first term here, but we'll factor out a 4 from these last two terms, so plus 4 times sine squared of t plus cosine squared t, like this. And as you can see, now we have this sine squared t cosine squared t value, which we know is equal to 1. So we get essentially 4 times 1, or just 4, and this whole thing goes away. So now we know that speed is equal to the square root of 5 sine squared t plus 4 and that's it. That's how you find velocity and acceleration vectors and speed given a position function.